Good morning, good morning, good morning. Years ago, I used to do this thing called AM Hustle, and I'm about ready to start it up. Just morning conversation with you guys to give you a little pep to get your day started. Not too long, really, really quick. So I woke up this morning and I had this thought. Are you working in your best interest? Because we've talked about it. The global reset is on and popping. And if you are not in a high level tech job, making 150 to 250, if you're just an average worker bee in that 75% of America making 30 some thousand a year, you are in trouble. It's just a matter of time. Right now, the eviction moratoriums are gonna be lifted real soon and you're gonna see winter. I don't think winter is coming. I think winter is here. And right now, due to the stimulus and other things that's propped up, we literally had the world's greatest economy stop for a few months. It absolutely stopped. And who benefited from this economy? Last year was the best year I've ever had. And I'm seeing this over and over. It's business owners who are saying this. Business owners, online store retailers, uh, people who have trucking companies, people who have uh, Uber and Amazon Lyft, Uber and Lyft drivers. An Uber and, you know, people like want to say, there's no way they can make this kind of money. Homie, you ain't even driving. You don't even know. You ain't even in the game. And this is one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about. Getting in the game, all right? I have someone who's trying to convince me, Pusher Man Mitch said some stuff, and he's like, listen to Pusher Man Mitch. And I've, I went back and forth, I said, are you in the car rental business? He said, no. Have you ever filed? He said, no. So you really don't know. Right now, I am in the middle of three claims that are taking forever and I'm not getting paid. I don't know how Toro pays out. but. Wrecking your car is not a payday. It is not a payday. And I need more people to move to the practical application, the technician side, because uh, I'm getting ready to tune up the corporate papers. I've had a lot of people who are asking me where was the training and I sent out and I sent it out two or three times a day because people are joining the corporate papers every day uh, where to get started. And people are still skipping over important steps. They're like, where is this? Because they want to go straight to the training and they don't want to do this other stuff. But here's the thing, all that other stuff is there for a reason. You need to do it. Don't skip over it. Currently, if you were to join the corporate papers today, you've got three to six weeks, depending upon how efficient you are, of work to do. So stop waiting. Waiting it because I, I already know I'm gonna have a bunch of people pile in just before I raise the price. But be smarter than the average bear. Go ahead and get into the corporate papers. I have seen all types of stuff online, like five thousand dollars to learn how to do an LLC. Guys, how many months have I been saying months that the LLC stuff? Did that the real value is learning how to start a business. The corporate papers is a business starting curriculum that you can apply to the trucking company, you can apply to a cleaning company, you can apply to a t-shirt company, you can apply to a beverage company, you can apply to any company. And why is that? Holding company. I'm giving you guys holding company game. No one else is breaking down the holding company game like I am. And because I set up a holding company and I was just sitting there thinking about my taxes this year, I now have so many deductions, so many deductions, because I actually pay taxes, right? And one of the things is that some of you guys are asking questions, do I need a CPA and a tax attorney? Let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's focus on making 
the money. Let's focus on making this first because many of you want to have all your ducks lined up in a row. I, I totally understand that, but you're not, you're not making the money yet. So let's focus on making the money and then everything else will fall in line because this is, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. This is the hardest thing you're going to do. Like not setting up your LLC and holding company structure. That's not hard. That's pretty simple. But next Sunday in this week, we're going to get into how to start a business. Now, no one on YouTube talks about this because it's not sexy. It's not the source. It's not some uh, like for the last four months, May, June, July, now August, four months. I have been running tests and I've been collecting data. I have data points and a data set. What is a data set? A data set is a collection of data points. I've been looking at my cars that rent super quick and I've been looking at my cars that sit and I've been playing with prices. So I'm collecting data. I'm going to launch the company September 1st based upon real marketplace data. And guys, you need to listen to me. You start a business based upon real marketplace data, it's like creating a printing press. It's like print money. You create a business because you feel it's a good idea. You assume that the marketplace likes your ideal as much as you do. And you start it and you invest money and your products just sit on the shelf. So many people do that. So many people will go out and buy products, do no marketplace research, and they will try to sell or they will try to run ads, and it's just a hot mess. I don't run ads. I don't run ads, and I'm making money using social media, using YouTube. I'm not running ads. If and when I get to the point of running ads, my ads are gonna be so lit, they're gonna be so hot, because I want them to be effective. And here's the thing, guys, that you, you really don't wanna hear. Um, people like, leave our rich family, leave our rich journey alone, leave JT Hustles alone. I'm about to say something that's gonna be very, very important for you guys to hear. I've been a YouTuber for 12 years. I've seen YouTubers come and go. YouTube is a personality driven game. If you have a good personality, people like you, they feel that they can relate to you, your channel could explode. And with the JT automations, the JT hustles and all this other stuff, I feel that they're not properly preparing you guys for the rigor of starting a business. This is why I say the things that I say, because I've literally seen other people say that you can do this tactic and within 21 days quit your job. Now, I've not had a job in 22, 23 years. So you're going to listen to someone that says you can do this little thing. You don't need a customer list. You don't need a funnel. You don't need products. You don't, you just need this high value skill and you can make all this money without doing these things. You're going to listen to someone who you cannot fact check me. You can Google me disruptive asset holdings. It's the name of my holding company. You can go to the Georgia secretary of state and look me up. You can look up Savage Finance Consulting Services. You can look up Mac Daddy All. You can actually look up my companies. JT Automations, name one company that he has that you can look up. I'm not being messy, I'm being factual. Name one company. Also, I don't, what is his real name? Y'all know my real name is Glendon Cameron. What is his real name? Pusher Man Mitch, what is his real name? You can actually look my shit up. Pusher Man Mitch, I went to the website and I didn't see anything about a car rental business. I saw all this credit stuff. And I don't know dude's real name. 
JT Alvame, I don't know his real name. I think our rich journey, I think they mentioned their real names. So here you are consuming content from someone you don't even know their real name. <laughs> I want you to think about that. It, 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 it's, it's funny. How come these people, once again, I'm being factual, will not tell you their businesses? Like right now, you can go to the Georgia Secretary of State and look up Mac, you can look up Disruptive Asset Holdings, you can look up Cameron Stroll Media. You can go to, you can look me up and see I have actual companies. JT, I, 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 I'm like, I see a lot of hype. I see a lot of, what's up hustlers? Where are the companies? Where are the companies? See, guys, you've got to be smarter than that. When you're listing someone, you don't even know their real name. They will not divulge. And this should be easy. This should be simple information. It's like, hey, my name is Glendon Cameron. I am the founder of Disruptive Asset Holdings. This is, I can even give you my corporate address. 5825 Glimmerous Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, Building 3. I actually have a real office. I have an office. You can fact check me. You can look at my companies. You can look at my office. You know I got money. I spent four, you know, I, I, do, I feel that my startup cost for the car rental business is going to be 450000 cash. I am showing you guys receipts. JT Automations, Raise the Entrepreneur, all these other people. How many of these folks are showing you receipts? That's called proof of concept. Anybody can come on YouTube and like, hey, you can do this, you can make all this money, you can make all this money, man, you can do this, you, just, you can make all this money. Anybody can say that. Cat Theo, who has a job. So you go listen to Cat Theo versus someone who hasn't had a job in 23 years. That's ha ha ha, very funny. So what is JT's real name? Someone knows his real name, please put it in the comments. You are listening to fa facades of their, you're, you're listening to their alter ego. Like Waka Flocka, and this isn't a diss, I actually like the dude, I've run into him like six or seven times, he's super polite, very well spoken, manable dude, and he is so different in real life from his online persona. And I think JT Hustles is a persona. I don't think that's who that dude is. Because once again, ask him, what are his businesses? What are his LLCs? It's like, I, everyone can say, I got these Airbnbs. Um, Noel Randall, I got all this stuff. At least I feel that you can kind of fact check Noel because she has no res ink. So that, if you go to Florida, you should be able to Google that. Once again, guys, start demanding receipts and proof from the people you listen from. Like, I, I would love to see, hey, JT, what's your real name? <laughs> I mean, I want you to think about that. Pusher Man Mitch, what is his real name? And I'm going to tell you why a lot of these folks don't tell you their real name. Because if you knew their real name, you could find out a lot of stuff about them that they don't want you to know. You could Google Glendon Cameron. I ain't got nothing to hide. I will tell you my company. I will show you receipts. I make $350,000 a year salary from my company. I will show you my pay stub. Where are the receipts, JT? Where's the proof of concept, JT? Where's the proof of concept, uh, Cat Theo? Playtime is over, folks. We are in the middle of the global reset and you have a lot of alter egos, fake ass YouTubers telling you that you can do this stuff super easy, super simple, and you can do it and be comfortable. The last four months, I've been very uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. Uh, Cause I got into a business, I did not know what I was getting into when I got into it. And part of the reason I did not know, like you, I watch YouTube videos. And I began to get a feeling that these guys were not telling me what I needed to know. 
I left a comment on a guy who did a Toro vid. This guy financed cars and it ended up bad. He said, um, 20 trips, eight cars, no profit. No profit. Right now, I'm working on the Toro strategy that has gotten me uh, a brand new car that I put it on the Toro. It's gotten me two trips and the car just hit the platform. And as I tweak it, and then this will be in the car rental course, and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the best damn car rental course because it's actually gonna teach you how to rent cars. It's not gonna be like Pusher Man Mitch. Go to the Pusher Man Mitch site. You will not actually see anything. You will see credit stuff. Uh, getting credit and running a business are two different things, man. Two different things. So my car rental course is going to teach you how to start a car rental business with one car. One car. It's going to be the best damn car rental course on the internet because it's going to be built in customer service and talking to the customers, getting to know the customers, figuring out what they want, and giving the customers what they want so they will give you the money, the money. But once again, ask these people what are their real names. I am telling you why they don't tell you their real names. Because I guarantee you, if you do a Google search on their real name, you're going to find some stuff out that they don't want you to find out. They don't want you to know about. This is why they use these alter egos. This channel used to be named Glenn and Cameron. I've never shied away from who I am, what's my real name. You know my real name. These other people, I think Cat Theo, that might be her real name. I don't know. Graham Stephan, he uses his real name. Meet Kevin, Kevin Perroff, he, you know. See, you got to understand, if someone is not going to tell you their real name, there's a reason. There's a reason. Some folks don't want you to know their real name because then you can start doing investigations. It's, this thing is called uh, doxing when you go in and put someone's out real information. Um, Coffeezilla got doxed and I'm like, what is the problem with showing what your real name is and talking about your real life? What's, what's the problem with that? That creates transparency, that creates trust. You guys know, I live in 30327. Google is the home prices in that area. You know, guys, I drive a Porsche. You know, I got, I drive a BMW. I put ATM receipts up. There ain't nothing in my personal checking. I think I got like 10,000 in my personal checking account because now I've been using that money for the car business. Um, once again, start demanding more from the people you listen to and start, you know, because instead of going, oh man, that, that was a great sauce, man. That was great sauce. Just like this guy who's, trying to tell me that put your man Mitch's strategy is going to work without the benefit of implementing the strategy and knowing if it works for real. I actually have had cars. A girl had a wreck last night. Fortunately, she wasn't at fault and she got hit by an Amazon driver. I ain't even going to contact her car. No, I'm going to hit up Amazon. I already know the game. Like I said, I've learned a lot in four months. Like uh, if someone gets in an accident and they're not at fault and there's someone else's insurance, I'm gonna go through their insurance process. I'm not even gonna bring her car into it. This is what I've learned. So guys, get in the corporate papers today. Stop waiting. You're three weeks behind. And the sooner you get into it, and like, once again, I'm gonna say this, don't be skipping over stuff. Every day, sometimes two, three times a day, I send out, welcome to the corporate papers, getting started, where you need to be. Boom, one, step A, step B, C, A, B, C, do, do it in that order. Do not, I don't wanna do A, I don't wanna do B, I just wanna get to the live training and start there. Don't do that. Don't do that because the curriculum is designed to benefit you in the manner that it's benefited you. You need the mindset training. You need to go, you need to review the strategic, you need to review this stuff before you start doing some stuff so you can have a greater understanding because 
I have people in the live stream asking me, should I start a holding company before I start an operating company? Simple shit. Simple shit. Because they're, they're like, you know, and I'm, I'm about to say something. My holding company game is elegant. It's elegant. I, I'm pretty good at that. But that is nothing compared to my starting company game. The whole company game, no one else is talking about it. You can't get this training anywhere else. No one is talking about it. But the most important thing, and this is what we're going to start doing this Sunday, and I might change it to Monday. I got to look at the football schedule. My Steelers play the Eagles, you know. I got, I got to look at the football schedule. But when we get into collecting data points, I'm going to teach you how to do it. And this is a skill that can benefit you for the rest of your life. I am 54 years old. Could have been retired. Could have retired two times. I could have retired at 42. So listen to someone who's showing you receipts and start to ask these guys like, hey, you know, JT, why come you don't show no receipts? I, I really appreciate you, bro, but I would really appreciate some proof of what you're saying. Because anybody can get on YouTube and say X to the Y to the Z works this way with no proof. And I, guys, indulge me. Go to JT Automations, go to Raised Entrepreneur, and try to do these business models. And you will begin to see that they're leaving a lot of stuff out. Just like all of the YouTubers, there's one guy who's actually putting some pretty good Toro sauce down. He don't get a lot of views. He don't get a lot of views. It's funny because the guy actually has cars in two markets. He ain't getting a lot of views. It's kind of funny. Those who, who tell the truth don't seem to get a lot of views. I don't know what if the YouTube algorithm likes liars. Yes, I'm going to say Irish Journey is lying because they did not retire in no eight years. They retired in 18, 20 years. That you should demand honesty and transparency from the people who are trying to teach you how to do some stuff. You should demand receipts. You should demand their real names. I want you to think about how many YouTubers you watch who you don't even know their real name. And they're not interested in telling you their real name because they know you're going to go to the Google machine. <laughs> His name is Edward Johnson. Ooh, Edward Johnson got arrested. Ooh, Edward Johnson got divorced. They don't want you to know their real names because that would drop the facade. See, as long as they are an alter ego or a persona, they can act in your way and you don't know the truth. But I'm like, if anyone knows JT Automations Hustles, what is his real name? Please put it in the comments. I, I want you to think about that. Because you're getting this information from someone who's giving you a stage name. We're giving you the club name. <laughs> My name, Pretty Ricky. My name, Tulok. My name, Bebo. They're giving you their club name versus their real name. I want your government name, man. Give me your government name. Give me some truth. Tell me where you grew up. Tell me where you live. Tell me, tell me, tell me something about yourself that's real. Tell me. Because I'm getting ready to revamp some stuff and I'm gonna start going after YouTubers because I'm going to be the apex predator for fake ass YouTubers. Because Graham Stephan, I haven't had time to address it, but he's putting out some garbage. He's putting out some clickbait garbage. And because he looks like a college kid, next door guy, he's been getting away with it. But now when I start tearing into Graham, it's gonna be real interesting. Cause I'm not gonna just like go, well, Graham said this and he's wrong. I'm gonna bring in experts to back up my assertions. So guys, get in the corporate papers today, stop waiting. I know a lot of you are waiting. It's like, you know, people waiting around. Uh, Eddie Murphy was did this, this sketch. Yeah, we just waiting around 11 o'clock. We're going to pitch a bitch. You know, it's like at a certain time, it's time to get active. 
The time to get active is now. The time to get active is now because when we get into data sets, data points and data sets, and that's probably gonna be four trainings because there's a lot to it because you're gonna actually have to do some stuff. And I'm gonna tell you, it ain't sexy. It's kind of, it's kind of fucking hard because you've got to go to strangers and say, hey, Mr. Stranger, I want you to give me some money. Okay, and then Mr. Stranger's like, okay. Mr. Stranger, what do you want? And you can ask Mr. Stranger directly what they want, and they won't tell you. He's like, well, this is what I want. And then you go ahead and give him exactly what he told you what he wanted, and he still don't buy, because they ain't what he wanted. So you've got to present offers and set up certain things to seduce Mr. Stranger into your trap. So Mr. Stranger's like, ah, I like that sauce. Yeah, get, eat it up with the big spoon, eat it up with the big spoon. And that's, it's hard. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you like, oh, you can make all this money, you can make all this money, man, you can do it, it's so easy, you can make I'm not like these other YouTubers, because essentially I make money from running a real business. I make money from running a real business. This is proof. And I'm gonna say something else that may be misconstrued as disrespectful. The majority of the YouTubers are living a finance life because they don't make enough cash to buy stuff. Catch me outside. Yeah, I said it. I said it. They don't make enough money. But they're trying to teach you how to make some money when they're living a finance life. They don't have no cash. They won't show you no ATM receipt with six figures in the bank because they don't have bank. And I don't want to hear, well, you know, I'm not going to have any kind of cash in the bank because I'm investing in even if you didn't invest, you wouldn't have six figures, bro. Even if you didn't invest, you wouldn't have six figures. I have gotten used to multiple six figures per month. I've gotten used to that. So this is why I can go out and pay $120,000 for a brand new Porsche and next month have that money back. Because I have a business. And this is what I want to teach you guys how to create a business that makes cash. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's gonna be easy. You're gonna have to change, bro. You cannot be who you are and make this money. Because if being who you are was gonna get you the money, you would have the money, which is a big indicator you need to change. You need to change, man. Just like I did. I am not who I used to be 23 years ago. The dude I was 23 years ago could not even conceive living in this house. I would have been, 23 years ago, I would have drove by this house. There must be some rich white folks who live up in there. That was my mindset back then. My mindset is, oh, I can do it. I can live that way. I can buy it. I have more privilege than the average white man. I am fucking hotter white chicks than the average white man. That's how I get down. Because I can believe it, I can conceive it, I conceive it, and I live it. I'm going to tell you all a little story. Years ago, when I was doing the Craigslist protocols, in the beginning, I was getting booger, booger boos, um, pound puppies, booger wolves. It was like, ugh, no, 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 no. And then I hit upon something. I hit upon what's called her feminine submission story. And once I tapped into that, and this is very important to talk to your audience, I started to get hot white women because I was tapping into something that they already wanted. See, when you give your audience what they want, they will give you what you want. And I start, I remember the first one. I wrote the ad and I was using Google Voice. And at the time, Google Voice was kind of haphazard with sending pictures. Like right now, Google Voice, you, you put a picture in and it will send it. But back then, I could not send her a picture of myself. I tried and she sent me pictures of herself. I knew what she looked like, but she didn't know what I looked like. And because of the way that the copy of the ad was so strong, this woman got in her car, came, it was a rainy Saturday night in Georgia, came to my place 
And I lived in the apartment at the time. So I had to go out and show her where to park. And I was like, once she sees me, she's going to peel out, right? So I go out. She rolls down the window. And I was like, yeah, you can park right there. And then I went downstairs. Then a few minutes later, she was knocking on the door. She knew what I looked like at that point. She still came in. So I was, my Craigslist protocols were so successful that I stopped normal dating. <laughs> it made no sense. I got to take you out for a steak dinner just to be, oh, I started going direct. I started going direct. And I learned because, you know, essentially the Craigslist protocol was my Craigslist marketing protocols just tweaked a little bit for dating. But because I had built those marketing protocols, I was in the position to leverage that for something else. So, guys, get in the corporate papers. Don't delay and don't wait, because here's the thing. The next four weeks of training are going to be critical to your business. I'm going to teach you how to create the data points and the data sets from your customers, because I have a friend, David Dinkins, and he always says, sell what people are buying, and I agree. So I'm going to have to teach you how to figure out what people are buying. There's a reason I have 10 BMWs, because that's what people are buying. There's a reason. I did not say, I'm just going to go out and buy some BMWs. I actually started off with Acras and Camrys. I'm not going to buy another Camry. I'm not going to buy another Acra. Matter of fact, I may trade out of the ones I have. I got to look at the financials because if I can trade out of them and not lose any money, they may be gone. So when you run a business upon marketplace data, you will make money. It will be easy. It will be easy. When you just start a business based upon social media and like you go out and buy your product before you even know who your customer is, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very hard. So go ahead, get in the corporate papers. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to give you this real sauce of starting a business. It works for any business because let's say you had a cleaning service and let's say you wanted to do upscale homes. How you talk to someone who needs their apartment cleaned is totally different than how you would talk to someone who needs their mansion cleaned. I'm going to tell you, since I'm a high upper end customer, we a little different. We're, we're demanding. We're like, we want what we want. But see, here's the thing with us and everyone else. Like uh, people have discussed the cost of my GPS kill switch installation. I will pay for service. I will pay for speed. This is something you will see across the board with people with money. They will pay for what they want and they have no problem for it. They will not be looking for, you know, some people will be looking for a deal uh, because essentially the new GPS people that I'm going to use, they're going to be my backup. I'm going to see how they do this Friday. They're going to, they're more expensive than my GPS guy. But so far, my GPS guy, whenever I turn those cars off, they turned off. Everyone without a fail, and I've used them um, seven, eight times. So, guys, get in the corporate papers. Stop wasting around, stop playing around, stop wasting time. Jump in. And I got one more email to send to the Hustlers Kung Fu, and I'm gonna be done with that group. So, this is your AM hustle. Hopefully, you're awake, and hopefully, I gave you some things to think about because. A lot of these YouTubers, you don't even know their real name. And they're not trying to tell you their real name. And I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder what you would find out if you knew their real name. Hmm? 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 So go below, get in the corporate papers, and I'll see you guys in the next one.